It's like you're at the poker table, Mark. If you can't spot the sucker, you are the sucker. Mark, if you can't spot the best deck, maybe you're on the best deck. The new new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sucks. Here's the guy we want. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the reaction phase. You all know me. My name is Josh, and I am here with the man with a plan, the new guy, the guest, whatever else the comment section called you. Mo Boxley, what is up, dude? What is up? You can't just start recording like mid joke. Like, no. I can absolutely, when you have the record button in the palm of your hands, you can capture whatever magic you want. And man, it has been a week of flesh and blood. How are you feeling? I feel great. I played way too much Kano yesterday and I just, I'm happy. I'm having a great time. Like,. I got so many messages while you were playing Kano. I got the the live Twitter updates. And if you don't follow Mo Boxley, you can at twitter.com slash Mo Boxley and youtube.com slash Mo Boxley. He's got some awesome Kano advice. He's not too great at other heroes, so buyer beware. But let's get into today's topics because we got a lot to talk about this week, dude. We are going to talk pro tour news and mainly what we mean by that is our favorite illusionist this podcast favorite illusionist did not living legend we want to talk about what that means there has been an announcement for worlds we are going to talk about mainly the blitz format being added we're going to go over that we now have to talk about what heroes are going to make a splash in the blitz format and how that is going to work and then for the comments section that was wanting it back, we are bringing back the market section. Mo Bogsley and I are going to talk a little flesh and blood market and end the pod with the classic closing crazy comments section. Dude, we got a rundown today. We got a lot to go over. There's a lot. There's so much to talk about today. So much good stuff besides prism but everything else so much good stuff there is like. so much good stuff and let's start with maybe the best thing that could have happened we've got some news for the upcoming pro tour and you pointed this out to me that came from a tweet from the man himself yes sir james white last night tweeted that uh, it was prism versus viserai in the finals of battle hard in portland and Prism lost. They drew three no blocks on the final turn of the game, and Viserai won. So it was sick to watch live. Dude, it's it's crazy. It was really cool to see that James White was on Twitter promoting this stream with implications far and wide beyond just like that table right there. Oh. And actually, it will be really cool to hear James White tell us himself when he comes on the reaction phase, right? And lets us know about these things in person that would be ridiculous spoiler spoiler alert we got oh yeah yeah girl. sorry sorry not ready. Not... is it are we gonna do the same thing that we would do in this podcast before and james white will be on next week oh next week we just every every week, no, every wait, we week. actually yeah no actually next week though like he's gonna skip pro tour france and join the podcast and still no, 100 um, we might even live call pro tour france from the podcast mm -hmm. all right before i get too many ideas in your head we learned this on twitter and Dude, Prism, sometimes it is, it's that way. Sometimes you need to block and, and you just can't. Like, you, you don't get the hashtag choice. Hashtag just block. Well, hashtag just don't <laughs> block and get run over by Viscerai. And Prism, we thought we'd see. Do you think you'd see Viscerai at that top table? Viscerai is really good. Yeah. Uh, he's a solid aggro deck. So, like, if you ranked Briar, Viscerai, and Fi, he's the most consistent of, like, the three. If you're looking mm -hmm. at variants, he's the most, like, on average, good games. You don't high roll people, but on average, you just have a consistent game plan. So it's not that surprising, honestly. It's also tougher to really enact the policy of just block. Like a lot of these decks, when you get a lot of games in, especially against Briar and against Fi, you can start to feel what the lines are going to look like and what the turns that you, you hear legends about on Twitter, right? What those turns start to look and feel like and key cards mm -hmm. to watch out for. And you start to build this tempo. You can play around that. Viserai is that deck where the damage is consistent and it's consistently mixed. So, you know, mm -hmm. hashtag just block sometimes isn't even an option. You you can't block it out if you tried. It's it's no. too wide and, and too weird. So it's cool to see a deck like that making waves in kind of a 
let's call it an unknown meta, but everyone's here for the main take, and that's Prism. And before I even let you go, dude, I'm balancing out the fact that last week you had some spicy things to say about Prism. And because of that, I reached out to several high-level players that I know and several high-level players that you know, dude. And I talked about this Prism deck. And the conclusion is, while this Prism deck can be powerful, it is an extremely difficult deck to pilot. And it's very rewarding to play. When you play well on a Prism deck, you feel it. You feel like you've made a lot of good decisions. And when you play poorly on a Prism deck, there's a lot of points you can go back and look and re-evaluate. So while a lot of people want to see Prism gone, I like that that creativity is going to be there for the Pro Tour. 100% agree. Like all jokes aside, Prism is a very hard deck to play perfectly, but it's a deck that will reward you if you do. I went undefeated at the Pro Quest because you learn the lines and you can really reward pitch stacking, like evaluating your plays. It's a very hard deck to play perfectly, and it's a great deck to play. It's super fun to play, but that's the problem. It's not fun to play against. Nobody wants to play against Prism. It's not enjoyable. It's not fun to play against. So that's the only downside of it. So I I would I would tend to agree with you, but I I feel like that take is like six months late. Like I, I mean I've had this take, but no, it's yeah, still not fun to play against. So I like, just I I think there's m more unfun things to play against right now than Prism. Like I'm ready. I right now Oldham to me far more unfun to play against. I, I would I don't want to see Oldham. Certain Phi decks and certain Phi strategies can feel extremely unfun to play against. And sometimes it feels like you can't do anything right. But I, I would push back against that. We're just talking about feeling right now. I would push back against that saying once you learn the lies that Phi is trying to pull off, right? You can interact with them a little bit better. I think Icelander is a deck that can feel very unfun to play against if you're not on a proactive game plan or an active strategy, right? Certain decks. And then Kano is the same way. Kano is a deck that feels unfun to play against. There's If you're not playing an interactive strategy or an interactive deck or even another wizard, sometimes it feels like Kano's gonna Kano, and I just gotta try to kill him before he Kanos, right? And that's, that's not exactly the most fun thing to play against. And I would even argue before that, like a Channel Mount Heroic Briar could have been seen that way. But that deck just takes too long to to set up, so I don't know if it's in that in that conversation. So there's other decks that are not fun to play against. One hundred percent. I just Prism does what it does so well with those mixed threats of those high attacks that if you don't have the six block in your hand, you're gonna take a lot of damage. Yeah. They have those auras that if you can't, I mean, there's no way to physically get more action points normally. So, like, if they can double aura you turn zero and then just go aura every turn, you're just going to lose tempo so fast. And that's the main thing, because it feels like you can't do anything to beat Prism sometimes. They just have it, and you're just sad. Like, it's depressing, but... It, I would say you have to have sideboard tech against it. It's And maybe that's people's pushback, too. People don't like being told how they have to build our decks. How do we have to build our decks? What do we have to include? And Prism, you know, six sixes, you know, popper, stuff like that. Lead the charge. Things like that, they're almost like force includes because of this deck. So maybe there's a, there's an argument for that. And you only have so many slots, right? Like if you play right. six lead the charges, six poppers, that's 12 cards. You have no sideboard cards left. So your deck better be built perfectly. Like it's just so tough. Yeah, and there's a lot of strategies that don't necessarily have to. Like you, you can go wide enough. You can offer enough pressure where Prism can't just trade life total for board state all game long. But there are certain strategies that like, hey, I'm... I'm not capable of getting off to a fast enough start. And you're right. If you double aura me and I'm not capable of getting off to this, this race of a start and dealing damage, putting pressure and clearing that board, I, I could be in for a long afternoon. And against those decks, for sure, Prism feels bad to play against. But I think you and I would both agree on this. And we've disagreed on the Prism for a little while now, but we both agree that Prism being in the meta kind of keeps things a little more open and a little wobbly. I, we both have our theories about that. Yeah, Prism's definitely, I think before Starvo, before that meta, Prism was just bad for the meta. I think for this current meta, though, Prism is like holding that gate closed of all the bad decks that are going to come. Like, Prism is literally like stopping us from the horrible meta we could have. I think before, like I said, before Starvo, 
Prism was a terrible deck in the format, but now she's we need her and she's gonna go so like it's kind of depressing can you tweet at hometown tcg or at mo bogsley someone make the meme of the big soldier taking all the arrows and protecting the meta and it's it's just prism it's just prism just out here protecting the meta because i'm, I'm the same way i i think with prism gone things really narrow the the, the amount of lanes you can play really narrow and again that's just a theory it very well could be you know, that meta happens and then someone breaks that wide open too. But for right now, it does feel like Prism's keeping all that at bay. And because of that, I'm kind of thankful she didn't LL. So if she would have LL'd, what do you think Pro Tour Lyle looks like? Crazy. Like, Cra oh, you go with crazy. I, I think it does not look so, crazy. You think it looks no, crazy? No, like, 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 the Pro Tour is in what, two weeks from now? -ish? Yeah. Basically, two weeks. Most of the pros that I know, like all my friends I talk to, everyone I know, they have their decks locked. They know what they're playing. Mm -hmm. If you say, hey, guys, as of 10 p.m. last night, whole <laughs> new meta, go buy those cards. Oh, you're in France already? You don't have those cards? Good luck. I think the meta just gets super fun and super crazy because of that. Like, people might say Old Him and Bravo are the best decks. And then you just build decks that beat those decks. So you get in this weird meta of like everyone's trying to find out what the best deck is so they can beat the best deck or do you just play what you think is the best deck and you're in this crazy pile where I think you just play Kano to be honest but that's just me. <laughs> I think it circles back to playing Kano. Like it just it all comes down because, to playing Kano. I because I in that situation everyone is building their decks to beat those decks and people forget about Kano. They only have 2 weeks of testing. He's not on anyone's radar. They're like old him aggro decks, brutes, dash. And then everyone kind of just forgets about the Wizards. Like, I'm not even... Don't look at me like that. We saw it at Pro Tour 1. If the meta changes two weeks before the event, I think it'd be a sleeper. I was looking at you. I'm looking at the heat warning light on my camera. So when we have to cut this podcast and we all of a sudden return, just know that the hometown TCG studios are a little bit warm right now. I'm sweating a little bit. You guys told me to get a better camera. It's clearly... Not yeah, I, my camera's camera. it, the quality has never <laughs> been in question it's apparently the motor that runs the camera so i so i i agree with you to an extent i don't agree with you on the kano take because it's been done now and i feel i feel like someone somewhere in some circle is gonna be like hey remember this felt really similar this feeling is really familiar what happened last time we all felt this way oh yeah we all got burned to death for 25 like <laughs> We should be ready for this. Like, and, and Oasis Respite now is a card, and it's a pretty easy include in a lot of these strategies to kind of maybe keep those Kanos at bay. I really think that with Prism gone, you, you divulge into Guardian decks and aggro strategies that can race a Guardian deck, which your, your aggro strategies now are shrink you can have you have fewer aggro strategies that are viable in my opinion and and you're really you're running one of the two all of your mid-range game is gone save maybe reinar depending on how guardian heavy it is right intimidate intimidate good against erax like i i think it's more in depth than that like we'll obviously see probably after the pro tour when prism sure. wins what the meta looks like but i think like wow. here's like dash I think heroes like Dash that can have those super good decks against those Guardians, or I mean, mainly Dash, I guess. Like, there's other decks yeah. you play, though. Like, D Dash there's can, ways to beat Guardians. Right. And da Dash is viable, too, that, that full control mm -hmm. version of Dash. I think full aggro Dash is out in that scenario. I, I don't think uh, with uh, into, I, into an Oldham, I, I don't think you I can think full 76 aggro 76 card deck. I think if you play all 70, uh, 75 cards, I think you can. You, so you're playing, you're suggesting that our viewers play Stack Dash. I Turn I, the stack I, I over, playing, go to work. I was playing that tournament a few days ago, and they brought out Old Him, and I had my Boost Dash. I played every single card I could besides Command and Conquer. And you know, when you draw the items, your item dash. When you draw the boost, your boost dash. Your they boost. don't know what's coming. And it's great. It's a ton of fun. That's, I like, actually, this this is going to lead into, I'm going to pump the video that's coming out of the channel this week. We played, John and I sat down and played a dash game. And I turned zero spark of genius for a second Teclo Pounder Arsenal past. And oh, so the good. last turn of both Teclo Pounders was ridiculous ridiculous you'll have to check that out i'm sure i, I see I'm what sure. i see what you're saying and it you, it has games like that it also has mm -hmm. games where you have all the tempo 
and you're playing boost dash and then you draw three items right sure and you're I, like okay no against, against old him you're just like oh, i'm gonna switch really fast right because like you have those items that if you don't boost them away you'll have all your blues late game and yep. you just item dash you're right. just i'm not gonna attack with any of these cards just shoot you for a million yep and then you pivot into um, a late game strategy for sure mm -hmm. yeah it's it's optional but the problem with a deck like dash at something like the pro tour is dash is is weak to some variants of her own right and for a deck to make the run at something like the pro tour you have to have consistent consistency we saw that with our kano builds right these kano builds were built to get to a get to a spot and do the same thing over and over again take that variance out of kano and just do the powerful stuff so these dash decks will have to i mean they'll have to adapt a little bit they can't just slap mechanologist cards down on the table and say vroom go like it's gonna have to take some building to get us there 100 i think the new crown helps with that a lot too yeah the guard of arsenal like if you arsenal the item like super early you're like i'm on the boost strategy Boop, get rid of it pro, like pro tour lyle with something as open as this when things are unknown crown of providence good tool i was playing crown of providence today so in briar crown of providence cool card in briar cool card in dash just cool card in flesh and blood. Like that card is great. I love it. I think I think people are a little high running it in every strategy is not great. I think there's oftentimes Skullcap is just better in in Fi against Fi. Skullcap can get one more turn of turning off Mask right with blocking a second copy of Phoenix Flame. Are Fi's playing Mask momentum? I feel like that's just wrong. I could I could be wrong on that one. There are uh, there are five builds that are playing Mask of Momentum. They're all interesting. There are five builds that are playing Mask of the Pouncing Links, and those are, are they playing Kudachi then? Like that's the no. only way I see. Mm -mm. No. Oh, I don't want to tell know. you the tech, dude. I'm not going to tell you the tech. Oh, I, I need that Chicago tech. It's so good. You're yeah, my bad. Oh, you're taking my a bad. beating too for coming out to Chicago, just getting your butt whipped for months of flesh and blood, and then moving out to I Denver to and, back. and then claiming the Chicago scene is no good. You are taking that, that's Min -Max a tournament. I'm going like, to try so hard and just win it. Like, Shout out MinMax, channel sponsor, sponsor of this channel, not sponsor of YouTube.com slash Mo Boxley, but sponsor of Hometown TCG. And there's a lot of MinMax pros, MinMax high-level players that are uh, – Giving you the business, dude. Well deserved business, in my opinion. I enjoy the business. To be well fair. deserved. There's two good players in Chicago. There's about ten people that have something to say about that. But this meta is going to be extremely interesting, mm -hmm. and this leads us into some more what could be meta shifting news, but mostly is just overall insane flesh and blood news, and that's going to transition us into worlds and into. The main topic, the meat and potatoes of today's pod, we are talking about the world's format and the big the big uh, reveal that Blitz has been added to the world's format. Now, what I mean by added is the Nationals lineup was revealed. You know, Nationals theoretically one step below Worlds, and the Nationals lineup was Blitz, or not Blitz, was Draft, Classic Constructed, Draft, Classic Constructed, Top 8. Worlds is taking it to another level and saying... We're saying draft, classic constructed, draft, blitz, top eight. All right, Mo, this is, this is your moment. We are going to talk about pros and cons. Give me your initial reaction to reading the news. Nice. Right, so initial reaction, I was, I'm not super pumped about nationals. I'll be going. Not super pumped. I see this news about worlds. I have my worlds invite. I have my PTI. I'm 52nd and limited. I'm so close to being top 50. I have my invite. I'm locked. I cannot wait for worlds. So this is the most exciting i've ever like i'm so excited i get to play kano in blitz on the biggest tournament <laughs> at worlds i am like oh i'm so excited i it feels like christmas day i just got a brand new game system n64 just came out i'm running around blitz is at worlds let's go lss watch this kid he's gonna play kano and blitz He's going to play Kano and CC, and he's going to play Kano and Draft. Watch this kid. He's don't going to him. cheat. Don't, don't tell him. He's going to cheat. Watch this kid. They'll never know. They're, when they're someone slaps know. down 35 or 30 life Kano in Draft, there's a problem. <laughs> no, Just I, give me 15. I don't need all 30. Just give me 15. <laughs> all right. So your initial reaction was how pumped you are. And again, you mentioned you have uh, you know, your, your world's invite, so that's exciting. 
Uh, but the community was definitely split on this one. There's a lot of people on both sides of the fence. And I think a lot of confusion comes from an old LSS statement about the formats. Now, the LSS statement indicated that uh, draft, classic constructed, and even I think sealed was in that breakdown as what they called the most competitive ways to play flesh and blood. Now, again, let's all remember when we read these articles, they're dated at a time. There are certain meta strategies. There are certain sets that are out. So this is the way that flesh and blood feels and works right now. Then once this was announced, a lot of the community did a couple things. If you were anyone on the, in the community that said, if you don't like this, get out. Or if you like this, you should get out because of this. That's never the answer, right? That's just never going to get us anywhere. There's definitely somewhere we can meet in between. And I thought it was interesting to see LSS and James White specifically get on Twitter and talk about why we're playing Blitz, why we're doing this. And what slapped me in the face, the big like boom reveal to me was Blitz is the most common way flesh and blood is played right now. And as someone who doesn't enjoy a ton of Blitz, I don't play a ton of Blitz in my everyday life, in our local scene, whatever it is. That made me realize, oh man, there's so many different ways to enjoy this game. Do you think Blitz is the most common way Flesh and Blood is played? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I believe by it 100%. Rant. It's really? so easy to go down to your local game store, get four or five rounds mm -hmm. of Blitz in, and then go home. Yesterday, the Blitz event was seven rounds, and if that was CC... I probably wouldn't have shown up because seven rounds of CC sounds miserable. You'd still seven be there of right blitz now. Blitz is, I would. <laughs> seven rounds of Blitz is like a doable thing on a Saturday night. Like totally. I can do that and not waste my whole day. Um, I think Blitz nine months ago, not a pro tour format, not in a healthy spot. I think Blitz now is actually pretty good. Like, what changed? Like Ira is the best deck. I think Ira. I think Ira was terrorizing the format. And now with um, with the new supplemental set, making other decks better, making the meta more open, banning Stir and uh, for, uh, Snapback, snapback. Uh, banning Crown of Seeds, like, I think they're trying really hard to make Blitz a really good format. And I think those turn zero, turn one wins are very rare. And while they do happen, it technically can happen in CC. It's very hard to do. I I think it's in a healthy spot right now, and I think there's still some changes they could make. But I think at Worlds, you want to see the highest level in every format. And I think if you're going to be a world champion, you should be able to play Blitz at the highest level. So I think let, it's a requirement. Let's parlay that into pros then. So we want to talk about pros and cons. Let's start with the pros here. And I agree with you on that take. If you want to be a world champion, I said this, man, you just repeated a bunch of stuff. That if we go into the hometown TCG archives, I used to argue with John about about how I loved Blitz as like the armory format because as as a work and stiff myself, I could leave work, I could go and get four rounds of Blitz, and I could get home to my wife. I could make dinner, we could watch our shows, and I could get to bed. So I could get my flesh and blood, and I would have a blast. But also at the time, I recognized that it was not the most competitive. Like I I made that recognition, and I said I I sacrificed that for playing the game. So that right there is a, is like a big pro. And I also agree with you that for these, for worlds, for nationals and worlds, these like, hey, prove you're the best of the best. We should play multiple formats, right? I, you said that. Did you say that last week? I'm pretty sure I did when I was arguing that Blitz should be in nationals. I, I honestly mm -hmm. would love it if they added a second draft format to worlds. So it was Uprising and Tails or Uprising and... Uh, the very first set ever made. I don't know. I've never drafted it. Uh, welcome, welcome to Wraith. Wraith. You did yeah, draft. There we go. You did draft. Oh, welcome to Wraith once. at the farewell to Wraith once. event. Yes, I've yeah, we had a that good was time. a super cool event. Yeah, super cool event. But yeah, I think adding the more formats is better. Like having two different draft formats, I think would have been super cool, and a super great way to test who's actually like the best of the best. So I and I I agree with you, and I have been on record on this channel of saying, hey, I love the multiple format idea. I I've, I've been all in on that since there was announced that there was going to be a Worlds. I'm like, man, I hope you just have to play a bunch of different ways. Now, I if I can be critical, I, awful, I also wish that leading up to this, to avoid this moment, where in half the community's eyes or whatever it is, 
the statement was, you know, Blitz is not a competitive format. That was, whether that's true or not, that was the statement made and thus the belief that the community gets to operate under. Because when it's written, that's what we have to 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 digest and operate under. I wish that in Fab 2.0 or in an announcement leading up to this, there was said there's been substantial measures and steps taken and testing done to ensure that Blitz has moved in a direction of competitive play, right? We want Blitz to be open. We still want it to be your fast, fun format that you can meet at your armories and play, but we have made strides in making it competitive. If you had made that statement and then announced, you know, in next week, we're adding Blitz to the world's format. I'd have been like, cool. And and if anyone wants to argue, they can argue, hey, Blitz isn't competitive, but that's not for you to argue. The company has declared that's the declaration or that's the direction of the game and the direction of our community. And that's where we're going. And I'm down with it. I wish there would have been that statement beforehand and not just good, great players and good players even can infer that that's happened through bannings and hours and hundreds of hours of play testing. But your regular average everyday Joe, that's a huge fan of the game, that's digesting the game, that wants to know everything about flesh and blood, they're an enthusiast. They don't get that information. I they honestly should have made the announcement. I agree. Like I was super surprised when I saw that. I saw the announcement. And I was like, oh, it's just like nationals. This is gonna be boring. Like, great, CC and Blitz, nothing new. Like I was kind of upset. And then I noticed it said Blitz, and I was like, oh, like, but why did they not announce that? Like they were clearly going towards Blitz with the Las Vegas calling. They were going with the Battle Hardens being Blitz. They were making small pushes. Like, they are small, like, slowly, like, But there was, like, there was pushback, though. There was pushback it when was. those events were it Blitz. Was. People were like, why is a calling Blitz? I, th I think you may have said, why is a calling Blitz? I don't care. I get to play Kano. You've, you've, I'm pretty you've, sure. You've flipped I'm pretty both sure sides of that. Through that. Yeah. I think like, you've been like, I, eh. At the time, I, I think that was before the Pro Tour, and I was so deep into CC. And I don't know if I respected Blitz at that moment because we didn't have the new set out that long. But there was no really, like... Because that was right after uh, Star Wars became legal. I was so focused on practicing CC for the Pro Tour. Oh, and and Star I kind of pushed beast, Blitz off to yeah. the side. Yeah. Like, I threw Blitz to the side. I made a video on Kano. But, like, I think this is where Kano should be and forgot about it. And I kind of forgot about it even at the Pro Tour. I had my Kano deck. I had no, zero games on it before that battle hard and zero. And I was just like, I'm just going to play Kano. And I was like... This Blitz format's actually super healthy. I saw a bunch of different decks. Like, yes, Oldham was the best. But I, I, I think I realized they fixed a lot of issues with the Ira meta and a lot of, like, small other, like, details. I mean, there's still issues with Blitz. I'm not going to lie and say it's perfect because it's not. No, no format's ever perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's an unfair thing to... And, and I'm not saying you're doing this. I'm saying anyone out there is like, no. we can't have a world's format if it's not perfect. Uh, sorry, right. dude. Play a, play a TCG at any time in your life. There's been plenty of high-level competitive tournaments where, you know, your formats aren't perfect. I I would say I think Blitz currently is in a healthier meta than the last Pro Tour meta was. The, than the like, Starvo meta? 100%. I think this Blitz meta is healthier, and if that meta was good enough for a Pro Tour, I think this Blitz meta is good enough for Worlds, 100%. Okay. I So, I, we're both on the same page. We're both excited. I, I, I've i advocated for it before. I want I want increased communication. I want, if that's the direction we're going, yes. I, I want to know about it. And even if it's the mm -hmm. post before, even if on Thursday you make the post and then on Friday you announce Blitz, be like, hey. 100%. This wasn't off the cuff. Nobody made a snap decision. We've been going in this direction for some time. This was this was a direction and a decision we made together, and now we're putting it into play. I, I would have liked that. I, I think with Fab 2.0, like you said, they should have done that. And that also would have made sense with the calling Vegas, with the battle hardens. Like just make it in writing and don't just show us with events. Because with events, we're like, oh, it's a one-off event. And who cares? Sure. Put it in writing so we actually know. Sure. And don't just and, and my big thing is don't show us with what cards you're banning in Blitz, because then it, it still mm -hmm. takes a, a great player and hundreds of hours of play testing to determine that this format is now is now balanced. I, I wanna mm -hmm. I wanna hear it directly from the horse's mouth. And a lot of people enjoying our game, man, we're we're you know, we're in our early thirties and stuff. We got families. I have I have the I have the little one on the way and stuff like that, right? Like it's I, I can't I can't spend the hundreds of hours to determine and tell people, hey, Blitz is competitive. However, when LSS tells me Blitz is competitive, I can get behind, hey, this is the direction we're going. And I, it, it's a clear direction. It's stated. I'm cool with it. I 
I agree with that. Um, I probably have more games on Blitz than I should. I think about like right around a thousand games in Blitz so far, and I I'm with LSS on this one. I'm gonna yeah. stand behind them. I, I do think LSS is making some mistakes with Worlds, though. I I do. Um, what what is what is that? What do you tell me? So you, the, you didn't tell the, me there's this. two big ones. There's two big ones that Surprise. I think they make mistakes. Okay. Uh, one on I think my one channel, of, the biggest of course. Mistakes, by the way, <laughs> I agree with you, LSS. <laughs> Uh, one mistake I think they're making is being able to buy slash sell PTIs for Worlds. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get it for the Pro Tour. Sure, it's a lower level event. I think for Worlds, you should have to earn that invite. Did you just I call really the Pro do. Tour I a think... lower level event, by the way? Yeah, I, will, I, I don't like that you can even sell a PTI for the Pro Tour, to be right. honest. Sure. But especially for Worlds, I don't think buying but, PTIs but fill, should be a thing. But it fills those slots, right? On the Pro Tour, but at least it you... fills the seats. It puts butts in seats. Yes, yes. Like for the Pro Tour, sure. But for Worlds, like... When I think of Worlds, I think of Magic the Gathering, like, 24 of the best players in a room. Like, the best of the best. Like, not the richest of the rich, just the best of the best. Like, who actually earned their slot? And the other complaint is top 50 XP. I, that rubs me the wrong way a little bit. But that's just, I don't think XP should enter invites for tournaments. But that's just me. Like, for the large tournaments. So, Nationals, sure. But for the best of the best tournaments, I don't think who plays the most should be invited. Like, I, I'm glad people are playing the game. Don't get me wrong. I, but I think it's tough because online events give three XP still. And it's someone that can just grind online events over and over and over again and get that XP isn't the same as someone going down to the local game store five nights trying to get the XP that way. I, I got so twofold here. The the selling of, of PTI is always weird. Uh playing both sides of the fence here, just just to try to play a little a little devil's advocate. I, yeah. I would hate to for something to happen. With and and this is all about variants, where I issue a bunch of invites, and people can't go, and those seats go unfilled, right? And I don't find out like, hey, I give you a window to let me know, and now the window is too short for me to invite any new players, because like I said, most of us have have careers and stuff like that at this point in this game. Like it's hard to take the time off, whatever it might mm-hmm. be, families, etc. So I like the notion that it lets the players themselves handle filling the seats, right? But at the same time, there could be a system where, hey, if you're going to come to this, you need to lock in so early and we'll get a commitment. If 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 Worlds has to be 100 people, it has to be. A, mm-hmm. And I get a commit. You have till this day to commit. And if you can't know by then, I'm sorry. But now I start inviting down the line. Now, whether it's ELO or closest people, whatever that system is, is up for debate. Mm-hmm. But then I start inviting down until I get the best 100 people currently available that weekend because yes. it takes away a little of that variance of I could just buy a ticket because right now mm-hmm. I have no play testing I play for fun with friends and at the local game store you know preparing for a child so I could mm-hmm. go buy a world's invite and be at worlds and and that's twofold right if I do that flesh and blood we've talked about the better player wins almost all the time so I'm going to buy this invite I'm going to go and I'm going to get slapped and the cream's going to rise to the top anyway but what if I ruin someone's day? What if I mm-hmm. what if I have a couple real good games and really ruin someone's day? What if you're in the draft pod? What if you buy your ticket? You can't draft. You're not sending good signals. You're ruining the guy you're passing to. You're ruining I, the guy I have he's no, passing to. I have no sympathy it's, for that. Play in the pool you're given. I have no sympathy. 100%. I've never I'm had any saying. sympathy for good players saying bad players ruin my draft pod. Well, then be a, if you're a good player, be a good player. Adapt and figure it out. This game rewards skill. Don't give me that. Don't get That's no. more of a where you're sitting in draft matters so much more than it. Sure. Sure. It won't. It won't. That, that will. Saying. But in worlds, I'm if you are thrown adversity, I expect you to overcome it. It's like this. Blitz thing. You know, getting back to the blitz format, because we got to talk about cons now. Mm-hmm. You know that. As it's currently stated, I'm not a big fan of them adding it because they didn't communicate with us that it's moving competitive, right? Because this is like the first slap in the face that it's moving competitive. That being said, if I was going to Worlds, too bad. I've been handed adversity. It doesn't matter if I believe it or not. This is Worlds. This is the championship. It is time to to deal with the adversity and get over it. But with that on your mind, what are some cons you can see coming from this? So, one of the big cons is announce- announcing this so late, right? Like, Worlds is, what, two, three months away? Three months away, I want to say? Like, 
that, you, that's you, a short time. You pro time. players, that's I, I know it is a short time because of how many games you have to get in like how many different formats. Yeah, but it's just funny like, for, us, for us regular humans. We're like, dude, it's three months out. What do you mean? <laughs> Or also like just like planning like yeah. travel like yeah, yeah, yeah. like going to nationals right now is a pain like it's not even worlds like just trying to get the nationals is yep. a pain because they announced it so late. Yep. Um, Communication, but, dude. But about blitz, like blitz testing. We got three months. We didn't know this was a real format. Like as you said, like until right. a few days ago. Um, there are those decks that just feel bad to run into. Like if I'm playing a deck with like almost no block armor, let's say Icelander, Kano, those decks that don't block well, right? Say like, it. No armor blocks. Say it. Benji, Benji will just kill you. Benji will turn zero kill you, and that feels bad just because you can't do anything. Decks like Reinhardt, if they high roll you and you lose the die roll, guess what? You're dead. I have guess seen what? a Reinhardt turn zero kill at a skirmish in the top eight. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. I was I didn't know it could happen until it happened. I was like, oh. Okay. Another good deck that I'm calling now will be at Worlds is KO. I think. Yeah. These pro players are going to get that KO deck, jam 500 games, and it's going to feel terrible to be like 32 dominate or whatever number they're going to make it. <laughs> like, there are decks out there that feel terrible to play Blitz in. I get it. But I also think being able, like, those are downsides. I'm not going to lie to you. Those feel sure. terrible. The, and, like, and that doesn't mm -hmm. mean you're against it. That doesn't mean we're hating. We're allowed to talk critically and think of these possible outcomes. So that's definitely a downside. And the fact that it it made something for people to talk about before Worlds that wasn't how freaking awesome Worlds is going to be is mm -hmm. is a little bit of a downside. And that all could have been avoided. Again, if they told us it was 100%. competitive, everyone would have just been hyped. And everyone who was complaining mm -hmm. that Blitz wasn't competitive, even myself included, would have gotten it out of the way. We would have gotten the complaining out of our system. Yes. And all mm -hmm. we would have focused on is how kick-ass Worlds is going to be. Oh, I can't wait. Dude, like, I'm still just hyped. Like I, I'm hyped too. But what are some, what? Okay, so let's talk red flags. Downside. Then Let, we're yeah, we're talking about. Oh, you have one more downside. You have one more downside. Oh no! I, I mean, I can think of. I'm sure if I could spend two seconds, I can think of some more. You don't spend um, two seconds doing anything, dude. You you take your time. Daddy Mo Bosley I'm takes his player. time. God, have you played against me? Like I play so slow. Like oh. It's rough, dude. It's rough. When you and I play, we spend more time chatting than play. It's really fun. I think I... The, that's the problem with being good friends. We spend so much time chatting. while, And we both know what we're doing so well at this point. We're just chatting most of the time. I, I almost feel bad, like, this side track for some of the opponents I play against at these high-level events or even, like, at skirmishes because I've played Kano, like, a thousand times. I don't pay attention to my hand. I'm there to, com like, make conversation. Yep. And a few times I've noticed, I'm just talking to them, and I could tell, they're, like, they're trying to focus. I'm just like, yeah, so the weather outside is pretty good today. What you have for lunch? And they're just like, sir, I'm trying to think. And I'm like, oh, my bad. Like, I'm not, like... So we, we all just learned something about like, you. Not only do you uh, deploy gamesmanship to try to win <laughs> and beat these people, but you also, your conversation sucks. Like how's the I, how's the weather outside, like, friend? But, like, but, dude, your conversation. How, how is the how is the weather? How, your conversation how's the weather in Chicago today? Terrible. How's the weather? I don't even want. I, I don't know. I don't want to talk to you. Like, that's did, your opener. Did you see the weather in Vegas. If you like, were to, if you were to come up to me and try to date me with that line, oh, get out! I'm in I'm from the mustache. For a reason. I'm like, in. I'm in with the mustache. I'm out when you talk. God, get me like, out of here. I'm, Gosh, you know I'm single. Like, there's a reason I'm single. I can't talk to people. Like, I play card games. Shout, shout like, out the comment section. Shout out the pod. If you got someone who's looking for love in all the Colorado places, you can hit him up on Twitter funny? at twitter.com slash mobile. I somehow think my head's like disconnected for like two seconds because I heard nothing you just said. Uh, I heard a shout out and I just lost it for like two Don't seconds. Don't tell him. Nobody tell him. I have no, no idea what you just said. Nobody tell him. Nobody tell them that's a that's a winner right there. But moving, we're on your dating life, and while that might be a more exciting topic <laughs> for the listeners please, than please Blitz, really fast. Um, or or lack thereof. In my I, in my dating life is I date my wife, so I, I we're both probably equal as equally as exciting. Like that's we're not very <laughs> exciting dudes. But what are some red flags? So I wanted to think about things like. I, I want to be open to evaluation, especially with something as critical as this. And I want to be open to before or after being able to say, hey, this was good or no, this needs improvement. And some red flags for me is going to be if 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 Blitz is knocking out 
players that we think are are, are more skilled or is you, you're all you're hearing about all weekend is bad blitz beats right even if they're not true if that's the only thing being tweeted out all weekend if that's the only conversation out of worlds that takes away from again how kickass worlds is and it's not worth bringing blitz in i want the hype i want the publicity i want the excitement i want our players popping off having fun i want surprise kano i want everything that i got at first pro tour and i want nothing to soil that so that's that's a red flag to me even if i hear about it so the other side of that though is these the players that are going to be tweeting those bad beats that are like Four, seven, like 10 and 0, 10, like 9 and 1. I just, quick math, I'm, I think that's right. Like those players that are on the cups of top eight, it doesn't matter if it's Blitz, it doesn't matter if it's Draft, it doesn't matter if it's CC. If they lose those games at 10 and 1, 9 and 1, they're going to cry bad beats. Like, like I've what, been there. No, because it's I, about I've how been that they player. Lose. When you lose, like when you lose, like when you're 9 and 1, like it's okay to say you had a bad beat, no matter what format it is. Like I've been there on Twitter, like I lost, I shouldn't have lost. Like, that's just the high stress at being nine and one and like trying to push the blame out. Cause I do that. Like when I, like I've been there on Twitter, you've seen my tweets. I'm like, like it, you slap it feels on Twitter, terrible dude. to lose at nine and one, no matter what format it is. Like I'm sure blitz is going to get a lot of those tweets and I, it might be deserved. Like you might but, get turn zero killed. Like I I'll say it, but no matter what format it is, like it's going to feel bad to lose at nine and one, 10 and one. Like, but it feels even worse to lose at you know seven and one and you come up against me in the first round of blitz and i am not as skilled as you and i turn oh you and it's like i disagree if you're seven and one at worlds you are as skilled as me you earn that spot you deserve to be there like if you can make it seven and one in cc and draft i don't see why you couldn't make it seven and one at, if blitz was at the start of the tournament like you're clearly a skilled player you clearly yeah. deserve to be there yeah that's fair that's that's a that's a like, fair take i i just even even the press. I don't want the press. I want our game to grow, and so many, of our, so much of our game is about reach on social media I, and, and Fab Twitter. Fab Twitter slaps, and I don't want to see Fab Twitter dominated by 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 bad beat stories and I hate blitz stories. Like I just I don't want to see. I, it. I think it's. I would rather play against you and Blitz around eight when we're both seven and one than round one when you're that like you're like oh I brought Benji I like this character like that feels a lot worse slap, slap, round slap, slap, one slap, slap, slap. than round eight yeah like, the... like if it's round eight I'm like this dude planned his tournament he planned to take 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 out Kano's in round eight because he thinks Kano's gonna be the best deck in sure. the top tables but like round one it's just like I got unlucky with this matchup because we're all zero and zero like yeah the, i think it's the blitz the position of the blitz format rounds. is good yeah and i think james white yes. made a statement about mm -hmm. that about why blitz is where it is in the tournament breakdown because those bad beats that can happen are going to impact you less so dude i'm yeah I'm, I'm all on board with that oh my god is that a sippy cup sorry i that was one of the comments from last week when you pull up. I was like, wow, that, someone's never seen a shaker before. That was, my, before. That was, was my comment. I was going to comment on it. I, you you nope. took my comment. Too bad. It's taken. Now you can't use it. I, I got to use something I got to scroll and find a new one. Like, so I <laughs> I, the news cycle is a con for sure. And the second con is kind of goes with what you said. A lot of players took Blitz, put it to the side. There's not a ton of time. If our mm -hmm. high-level players, the best of the best, the cream of the crop, go into the lab and all these different playtest pods come out of the lab with two blitz decks that are the best. I'm just, that's not what you think. I, I, I'm I talking know, about I red know. flags. And if they come out of the out of the tank with two blitz decks, and in our blitz meta, in the in the blitz top eight, we see three decks represented, right? And and some and an Azalea here, there, whatever it might be, right? That, to me, is also a red flag. Now, is it a red flag saying we didn't have enough time to test? Is it a red flag saying this format isn't quite ready? Whatever it is, it's not good, in my opinion. I, we're going to see the classic constructed, especially with Prism still being here, man. It's going to be, oh, well, Prism might not be here for this. But we assume classic constructed is going to be pretty wide. I don't want to see Blitz narrowed down to, like, three decks. I, I agree with that. I haven't done a ton of testing because it just got announced, so I can't comment on what i think the decks are going to be but I, I think it's gonna be a wide open format i i really do i think there's I, a I, lot like of top decks, so I like to think so too i like to think so too i can't think of any deck that i can be like this is the best deck in the format because i don't think there is a singular best deck right now and i could be wrong i could be like overthinking something 
but I don't know what that would be. Like I, I've, what do you think the best deck is right now, Josh? I'm curious. So this transitions us nicely into which heroes are going to make a splash. I got to tell you, if if you, it's like you're at the poker table, Mark. If you can't spot the sucker, you are the sucker. Mark, if you can't spot the best deck, maybe you're on the best deck. I got to say I'm taking Kano. I, I've always loved Kano and Blitz. I think you suffer a lot of psychic damage yourself playing Kano all day long. You take a lot of self-inflicted psychic damage. But with Blitz only being the last format, you already are going to be... You, you have to be resilient to get here anyway to where your games matter. If you're here, I think you're resilient enough to get on Kano and slap. So I think psychic damage is mitigated. Kano is a deck that can turn a lot of losses into wins and reward skilled play. And it's a format where Kano shines. I'm taking Kano as the best deck in Blitz right now. Okay. I mean, well, I respect it. Um, now, the well, next question is, is three months enough for the best of the best to learn Kano? I think, I think a, it is. I, I think it is. I think a lot of those players have experienced playing Kano already. I don't think mm -hmm. the... Because when you play a ton of this game... You start to look for, I, I know myself when I was jamming the most games is when Kano was the most attractive to me because it's the deck that rewards learning it the most. It's yes. It rewards the most skilled play. So when I was jamming, you know, hundreds of games, it was like, I kind of, I'm gravitating towards Kano because the payoff for playing hundreds of games on this deck is going to feel better than the payoff of playing hundreds of Katsu games. So, so I think, I, I think, go ahead. Oh, go for it. No, I'm I'm right. done. Kano. All right. I, I, I think if you're like I think while Kano is an S tier deck, I think it's like one of the best three or four decks. I think there are decks like Icelander and Prism that are also up there in those best of the best and Reinhardt. Like all three of those decks are not great for Kano. And if all three of those decks are good in this meta, which I think they are, Kano suddenly suffers. So I think this meta is so open with like Reinhardt, Kano, Prism. Icelander. There, there's uh, a hot take. Him. In there. There's a which hot one? take in there. Wh which one's there's, a hot take? I might. I, I think there might be two hot takes in there. What, what are the two hot takes? The first hot I'm take. I'm curious is, now. Prism and Blitz. I think is a hot take. I think. So that's I think a, after the Las Vegas calling, yeah, they proved that like no one is running six attacks outside of Old Him really. Sure. And I think you just punish every other deck that like you can go wide or you can just go big auras depending on who you're playing against. I think that's a very strong deck right now. But then Reinar and Prism can't both be strong because I feel like they naturally prey on one another, right? They, they naturally prey on one each other in a way, but they also prey on the rest of the field where it's kind of like the current CC where it's like you can say Prism's really good, but Oldham's really good. Does so Reinar like, play, prey on the rest? And, and, and this is not a criticism. Does Reinar really prey on the rest of the field if the rest of the field isn't just Oldham? It depends, because Reinhardt preys on Old Him, and it preys on Kano pretty well. It also preys really? on Icelander, I would assume, because Icelander really can't do much to Reinhardt. So, like, Kano starting at 15, you can intimidate them pretty easily and get them down super fast. That's true. And That's same true. with Icelander starting at 18, or 17, 18. 18. You can prey on her. Like, her Frostbites don't do anything. Like, you have to pay yeah, one Reinhardt extra. does seem to always like, have extra pitch. It always, so that, like, that's a deck that always seems to have some floating pitch out there. I, I think... This Blitz format is one of those where, like, a lot of decks are really strong, and it's just what you think the most of the meta is going to be, and what deck you're just most comfortable on. I think Blitz and CC is a comfort pick format currently, and I think that's great. Like, what do you think the community thinks is good that is just, it's a trap? Let's, what's, name, name the trap. Name the Blitz trap. In Blitz. Because oh, I, I, I have a take on this, and I hope you don't say the honestly, same one. Honestly, <laughs> Was that your, was that your yeah, take? I think that's such a <laughs> trap. I, it's so lean and so low to the ground, but Blitz has mm -hmm. so much disruption, and the deck that isn't running Disruption Kano can just pop off and just end mm -hmm. your game before you get, get a chance to do anything. I I think Kasai is like the mono red of mm. Flesh and Blood. I think Great take. it does what Great it does take. very well. Like It knows what it wants to do. It can do it very well every game. But that's all it can do. It can't switch. It can't play well on the back foot. It is very, this is my strategy. I'm going to try to do this the best I can. 
And if this strategy doesn't work for you, I'm going to scoop it up and go home and just be sad. Like, <laughs> Play turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. Does your life say zero? Go next. Thank you. <laughs> so, oh, we're getting a turn four and blitz. I thought this was a turn zero four. <laughs> I, I was playing mono red. I actually have a video on the channel oh. playing mono red from last week. That was, dude. Hey, magic mono red is much different than when I used to play it. You have to is like, it? yeah. Yeah, it's you can't just go turn one, two, three, four. If they drop a board wipe, lose. Man, there's so many new tools that like give you run, but you can't commit. You're like mono red control aggro, control grow. Ooh, it's it's ooh. weird. So it, now that makes me think: Is there a way to play Kasai to proof her against some of this? Some with you, that feels like a trap. It feels like it's it's viable to too much disruption, and you you can't go into something like worlds. It's like Benji. You can't go into something like Worlds where, like, hey, if I come up against this, I'm going to win, but otherwise mm. I'm going to lose. Are you really right. willing to put it all on the line for a dice roll on who your opponent is, right? Oh, oh. looks like your uh, camera overheated. Oh, no. You are too hot. Let's is what it's saying, Josh. Go. You are too hot. Too hot. And we are back. It is uh, too hot to handle. The sun is too bright. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen right here in the studios of Hometown TCG. Uh, the camera might go again at any minute. So we'll do our best to get yeah. through here. But we both agree. I think Kasai is a trap. I think I don't think mm -hmm. Benji's a trap because I don't think a lot of our pro-level players are going to make the move into Benji. I can't imagine that happens. No, I... I mean, I think there might be one one person at Worlds with Benji. I also would not be super surprised if I see a Data Doll. I think Data Doll is playable. You, I think if anyone's going to break it, it's going to be these high-level pros. That's the hottest take. I, is it, though? I think yes. Data Doll has game against that, a lot of decks, and especially like old human stuff that are trying to play slower. Data Doll has the time to set up, and it's I I like it. You, sir, have just Data made... Data fan. Nope. I, no, nope. I think I was just a data doll fanboy, but like I, what are you, what are you gonna say? What I, you need to put on sunglasses because that's the hottest take. So you need. To, I hope you have some handy. That is the hottest. That take is hotter than my camera right now. Well, that's pretty hot. That Shout is, out! I don't think hot. we see a single data doll at this event, but if we see a data doll, that would be. Yeah, what about on it? Do we'll that. Well, you got to make it there if you're going to play Data Doll. So let's let's not get carried away. So, okay, we think this is going to be open, and, and this is going to be fun. I think we both agree this is exciting. Follow along for more, guys. If you have any spicy takes on this, let us know in the comment section below. We, we want to hear about people's spicy takes as to what's going to take down this mm -hmm. event. I think there's a lot of options out there. I think there's a big one we didn't talk about, but let's leave it for the pod next week. I think a certain Rune Blade might have something to say about some of these events, but we'll get into that. Maybe next week. Rune Blade. Yeah, there might be a certain Rune Blade that's got something to say about these Blitz events. I well, honestly don't know who you're talking about. I'm not even joking. Well, so a Rune Blade is a class in the card game Flesh and no, Blood. No, right, right, and right. And that, that class does mix. Oh, okay, you got that part. I'm trying kind to of figure out like which Rune Blade is good in Blitz. I'll um, let you. I'll Chain let you. is fine, but a little too slow. Briar is if you get lucky, you win. But if you don't, it's just a depressing game. It's not and that I depressing. It's, it's I not think that's the only two rude blades that are legal to play in Blitz. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know. I'm, um, I'm excited. I hope. I, I hope this pans out. I hope my 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 secret take pans out, and I'm gonna clip this. I don't do edit any editing, but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna. Well, I'm editing this podcast because of the camera dying, but I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna clip this, and that'll be the intro to that pod. Trust me. I I I'm will. I'm not gonna show up. I'm, I'm not gonna show up. That I day. will stop at know. nothing to make myself look good. I.e. the sunglasses. Are, are we <laughs> clipping in when the whole blitz thing I called last week? Or are we not? You didn't that? call it. Yeah. You didn't say this is what they're gonna do. You'd say I'd like it if they did this. I. I okay. those, those are different okay. things. I will be more for. I would like then. it if I, I won will... the lottery. Oh, I called it. No, di no, different things. Anyway, those are the heroes that are going to make a splash. Let's transition. We've talked a lot about gameplay, but our card game is twofold. There's a market section to be discussed. Take it away, Mo Bogsley. You got some market advice. This is financial uh. advice. Mo Bogsley is telling you exactly how you should spend every penny of your hard-earned dollars right now. So... First, go to twitch.tv slash mabogsley. There's a donate button. Just throw it all in there. First is that off. still um, there? It is still when there. When was the it last is. time you were on that? Three, no, five, a year ago. 
I don't know. My yeah, and we have channel memberships enabled, so this is a much Listen, better use j- of that. Just saying, money. Twitch still sends me a paycheck every few months. So Let's like, go. You guys can add to that paycheck. Let's Anyways, go. Um, so I'm just going to say the current cards I am interested in buying slash have been buying. Um, I think the, like I said last week, the Monarch Legendaries are very cheap. Let's just in Eclipse is a very cheap card, I think, currently. If they ever do the Legacy format, which I think they've talked about, which making all the banned the living legend heroes playable in a certain format. Sure. It's just in Eclipse is really good. I think Eclipse is a card that you can just stock up on. And if there's ever a different kind of chain that is shadow, you can play this card in that shadow shadow chain deck. Okay. Uh, that is one that I think at like 35 ish cold foil is a really good pickup price because it's a legendary cold foil. And that's just a steal. Um, the next easy one is doomsday. Um, this one's actually been going up in price. I, you laugh. No, no, you I'm laugh. not. I'm not. Okay. Like, I'll tell you why I'm laughing after you tell me the do. Go ahead, give me the doomsday stats. I gotta take these off. I can't see you. <laughs> All right, let me go and look at these up. Uh, I bought my cold foil doomsdays for about thirty five dollars. Uh, that was eight three. I bought three of them for thirty five dollars each. They're currently now at about fifty bucks. I don't think at fifty dollars this is a solid investment. I think around the thirty five forty dollar mark, which is where I picked them up at, is a great investment because Leviah is always there. We have the legal Leviah. And as they gain more popularity, which they will because Leviah is a decent CC deck right now, this card will only go up in value, right? Like, this is a great sure. pickup, in my opinion. Um, so, I want to, I have the worst copy of Doomsday known to man. I opened a copy of Doomsday, and it's the worst copy of Doomsday known to man. It's got like three white corners, and it's, mm, and it's shifted yeah. the centering, but it's not yeah. off center. It's actually like the card is square, but the art is. Is is pivoted to this? It's the worst copy of a card known to man. So anytime it's, someone says Doomsday, it, I think of that card. What about? Ed, let me tell you, it's pretty bad, dude. There's a big one. I think Husk is undervalued. If I, we get more, one. if we get more Shadow Heroes, man. If you guys don't have a Husk, now's the time. That card, mm-hmm. I I will I will stand on this platform. Possibly the most oppressive card in Flesh and Blood is Carrion Husk. Dude. Carrion Husk is the most oppressive card in this game. Like, but guess what? It's at a hundred bucks cold foil. How? Go, go, go. How? Okay, this is actually financial advice. Carrion Husk is a good card, and you should own some of it. I I was picking them up at forty bucks Rambo foil, and I'm picking them up at a hundred bucks cold foil. Like this card, Mopot is making the moves. Equipment. One of the best equipment. And I it's think so the good. biggest pickup. Like honestly, the biggest pickup is those promos for. Oh my god, it's a Leviah promo card. Oh my god, I don't know the name of it. It's a promo for oh. if you pre-ordered first edition Monarch from one of the online realtors. It's a big online realtor too. I firm blank on the name, but it's like a bad like two first uh, like a one first six Banishly cards. Mm-hmm. I think it's nothing special, but it's got alt art on this promo card. I picked up six of them at nine dollars each because like alt art promos that are like from a year ago i think it was a good investment i think they're so cool think, they're definitely cool think, to have i think investing in promos that are like ten dollars or cheaper that aren't like bad armory promos are good like sure i i that's my like i honestly think pick up those promos that are like under 10 bucks pick up some random like monarch legendaries because they're just cheap right now and don't don't be chasing the money, right? Like, as soon as they announce the next Warrior, don't go buy your Warrior equipment. Buy it now when no one's playing Warrior. Maybe buy the stuff now when it's low. Maybe like, we'll do a whole. Like, maybe we'll do a whole section on like buyouts and and stuff like that. Maybe in next week's pod when we talk market, we'll talk buyouts. We'll talk when to target cards, when not to target cards. Yeah. In our in our opinion, of course. But with the camera yes. probably boiling on the oh, inside, yeah, I do yeah. want to pivot and talk about some alpha boxes. Now we have. Uh, Arcane Rising First Edition Sealed Booster Box at fifteen hundred, and Welcome to Wraith Sealed Booster Box at about three grand. And these have been, and no, no secret, these have been on the steady decline. But I've always said that Flesh and Blood players all come from other card games. They all have this this deep emotional attachment, and we priced in ten to fifteen years of the game existing at, at the peak of these things. I I have been a stand where alpha stuff and cold foils are awesome. They're not worth that yet. That is not their value yet. That doesn't mean they can't be one day, but that's not their value yet. So it, it's we're seeing some of that come down as things are priced in. There was also a sale of an Eye of Ophidia. I think the cold foil uh, BGS-9 Eye of Ophidia, and I'm not a big grader, but from my understanding, a BGS-9 is basically considered like a raw card. 
on the open market and there might be a slight premium for the fact that it's it's encased or whatever it is and that sold for uh, I think it was, or it was listed. I'm not sure if it sold. It was listed for like 5,500 to 5,250, right in that range. And you had a take that that's right around the the maybe the price point for that card, maybe lower. So I think we both agree yeah. it's been priced in. Like Fab, Fab priced this stuff in, mm-hmm. our community priced this in, and it's it's definitely coming back down to earth, which I think it should. I think it, it sucks for the investors that got in early and paid that price. Like it. it, it I don't want anyone to lose money, right? Like, I'm in this for us all to get. Mm. We all want to cash out. We want to be happy. But I think you should be buying these cards for the right reasons. I want to buy Cold Foil Storm Shiders and Cold Foil Eye so I can play it in Kano. That's a sure. new thing. I think cards are made to be played with. And I think this game is so new. We shouldn't be leaving them on a shelf personally to look at. I think we should be playing these cards, getting out and shuffling them. Uh, this is awkward. Um, so I I think it's twofold, right? You need both. In my opinion, I've mm -hmm. said this, you need that spectrum. You need that player collector spectrum and everyone's going to fall on there somewhere and you need people to fall on near both ends. Now your hardcore collectors should also believe in playing the game and love playing the game and care about people who play the game. And your hardcore players should care that their game pieces and things that they love and they're emotionally attached to and like playing with have value. So mm-hmm. it's it, it's a balance there, but that's just what the market is doing this week. Um, if you want more information on that, I have something spicy I'll announce here on the pod. Uh, I am doing an opening alpha series with MinMax Games. We are open two booster boxes of arcane rising first edition and a welcome to wraith booster box in first edition on the channel is a three-week series every tuesday the first one dropping tomorrow that is the opening alpha series i'm excited for that to go live that was that was my first chance to open welcome to wraith first edition like that was my I first chance of doing that. Never done it. The best I got was drafting first edition Arcane Rising at the calling in Indianapolis. Re- That's dude, the I remember I got. that. I was that over was your shoulder. Scary. I was I kept that checking was so in. Much fun. I was like, mm-hmm. dude, this is so cool. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's what the market's doing right now. And let's close. The video camera hasn't exploded. Let us close with the closing crazy comment section. And since I stole your first one, I'm excited. I I knew you were gonna pick that one. I, I had a hunch, so I wanted to throw it out there. Mo, what is your mm. comment that you want to discuss this week? There's so many good comments, right? Like, I read all these. The first day I came out, I read all the comments, and I went back and I read them again. Yeah, there's some not so good ones, too. Yeah, there, there's, you know what? Like, it's a hit or miss. Hate me, love me. We'll, we'll call it hit or miss. I'm here. I'm here for the party. Um, <laughs> like, there's so many good comments. Like, I'm, I'm right now trying to find a new one because someone took my comment and it's a little bit awkward. Dude, I love putting um, you on the spot. Welcome to content it, creation. I'm Let's go. Like, I'm Let's go. And you know what? I think I'm going to go with Fanes. F A I N E. Okay. It's a simple podcast, but it's a good one to read. You ready for sure. this? Sure. Yeah. Glad the podcast is continuing. I like that. It makes me smile. Like, like no feelings towards, you know, me or, you know, like me or hate me. It's just he's happy or she is happy the podcast is still going. I'm happy to be here. So that's my comment of the week. I'm Dude, just happy to be here. And to touch on that, I, I was asked a lot, you know, with kind of a lot of the changes coming in the YouTube landscape. And even me talking a lot about, I'm talking a lot about Magic the Gathering. It's a game I've always liked. It's a game that's been my dream to talk about as well, as lo- along with Flesh and Blood. So I get the opportunity to talk about that. There's a lot of questions about what's going to happen with the pod. I couldn't ask for someone better to jump into, you know, and have discussions. And when we agree and when we disagree, it doesn't matter to me. I love chatting fab with you, dude. So my comment is along those same veins. It is from Guns and Pops. It says, lol, you can see the guest soul leave his body when they call him out for leaving Illinois because he couldn't win. A, this is a drum I am going to beat until my arms fall off. I cannot wait. Those that watch the pod from the local scene that know the conversation we had, shout out to all of you. And then also shout out you, Mo, because it is official. Mo Boxley is not a guest. Mo Boxley is the co-host of the reaction phase permanently you can catch him here every monday morning dude great pod today i had a blast chatting Thanks with you so much it's great i love being here 
This is awesome. Now, guys, we are going to let you go. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to visit Mo Bogsley on you or at youtube.com slash Mo Bogsley and twitter.com slash Mo Bogsley. And finally, one last shout out to channel sponsor Min Max Games. Guys, they do so much for us and they do so much for the fab community. If you visit minmaxgamesfab.com, you can use promo code HTTCG for 5% off an order of $50 or more it helps support the channel it helps support the scene thank you all so much until next time you guys know me my name is josh my name is mo and we will see you around bye bye